Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about KSP and molar solubility. What we're thinking about here is if I put some solid compound in the bottom of a solution or in the bottom of water, how much of it dissolves. So in this case we can see that we have calcium hydroxide as a solid at the bottom of some water. So this is full of water and we got our calcium hydroxide. Please don't make fun of how poorly my flask is drawn. I'm not a real good drawler. But anyway, the question is, my calcium hydroxide splits apart, and we want to know what portion of it splits apart. How much can dissolve? And that's the question that KSP answers for us. We know that when calcium hydroxide splits apart, we're going to get calcium 2 plus. That's one of our ions, and that's going to be aqueous. And we're also going to get two hydroxides. So we know we'll have some calcium, 2 plus, and some hydroxides floating around in here. But the question is, what's the balance? How much is going to dissolve and how much is going to stay solid? And that's where our KSP can, comes in. It's like an equilibrium constant that tells us how much can be dissolved. And just like normal equilibrium constants, we can write it as products over reactants. But in this case, notice that our reactant is solid. So all we're really going to have is our products, which are both aqueous, calcium 2 plus, and OH minus. And notice, since there's the 2 in front of my calcium, that OH minus is going to get squared. So that's my KSP. That answers the KSP part, what's this molar solubility business? Well, molar solubility is the concentration of that solid we can dissolve in terms of molarity. So let's take a closer look at that. Our molar solubility is the quantity of solid that dissolves in moles per liter. And in this video, we're going to go back and forth between KSP and molar solubility. And the first two problems we do, we're going to determine molar solubility from KSP, and then the last problem we're going to go the other direction. We're going to determine KSP from molar solubility. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first problem. This one asks, what is the molar solubility of calcium hydroxide? And it gives us the KSP. I've broken this down into four steps. The first step is write the reaction. We've already written the reaction, and so that step is done. And now we're going to use an ice table. What we're thinking about here is initially <clears throat> I have all solid calcium hydroxide. And that means that my initial concentration of calcium and hydroxide is zero. And then it's going to increase. Well, calcium is going to go up by x. And if calcium goes up by x, then hydroxide is going to go up by 2x. Remember, this is because of this 2 up here. For every one calcium hydroxide which splits apart, I get two hydroxides and one calcium floating around separately in solution. And that means at equilibrium, I'm going to have x and 2x. I'm just adding these columns down, so 0 plus 2x gives me 2x. And now, I can go ahead and plug those equations into my expression for KSP. My expression for KSP, just like we wrote on the previous page, is calcium 2 plus times hydroxide, and that's squared. And now, I can go ahead and plug in my values. I know my KSP is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6. And that's equal to x for calcium and 2x squared for my hydroxide. 2x squared, importantly, is going to give me x times 4x squared. Remember that when there's this square out here, that squares the 2 and the x. So that gives me 4x squared. So in my next line, I'm going to get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6 is equal to 4x cubed. And now, what I'm going to do to solve this problem is divide both sides by 4. We'll go up here now and keep our work going. 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 4 gives me 3.25 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's equal to x cubed. Now I take the third root of both sides. That's just to get x. So what I'll find is that 6.9 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to x. And that's in molarity. Remember, that's what my x represents. That's how much I increased my calcium by. And similarly, right, there's a 1 in front of my calcium hydroxide. So that's how much my calcium hydroxide dropped by. So that's actually the answer to my molar solubility. 6.9 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter of calcium hydroxide can be dissolved. So once you solve for x for these problems, you've solved for the molar solubility. Let's do one more. All right, here we want to know the molar solubility of copper bromide. And it's copper 1 bromide in this case. And the first thing we're going to do is write our reaction. So we're going to have copper bromide, and that's solid. And that's going to go to copper plus, and we know it's plus because we know bromine is minus 1. And so that means that we have a copper 1 dissolved plus a bromine minus dissolved. And now I'm going to go ahead and do my ice table. Well, my initial 
for copper plus is zero, and my initial for bromine minus is zero. You can see these are relatively easy ice tables compared to some ice tables you might have done. The change is going to be plus x and plus x. They're both plus x because they both have a 1 coefficient in front of them. Remember, copper bromide has a 1 in front of it, too. So when we solve for this x, we're solving for how much copper bromide uh, can dissolve. So at equilibrium, we have x and x, which gives me my KSP expression, uh, which is just copper plus, right, my first product, times bromine minus, my second, min my second product, and they're both just one of them, so we don't have any exponents, or I should say the exponent is just one. This guy, once again, solid, so we don't include it uh, underneath those guys. Now let's plug in my numbers. I get 6.3 times 10 to the minus 9 for my KSP, and I get x times x. Well, what's x times x? It's x squared. So we'll just go ahead and write x squared there. How do I solve for x? This one's easy. I just take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I'll get 7.9 times 10 to the minus 5 molar is equal to x. And that is my molar solubility. So for copper bromide, 7.9 times 10 to the minus 5 of it could dissolve. All right, last problem, and now we're going to go the other direction. In this case, we get the molar solubility, and we're asked for the KSP. So it says the molar solubility of iron hydroxide is 1.96 times 10 to the minus 10 molar. What is the KSP? So basically, right, this is just telling us what x equals when we make our ice table. And the, product, the, the steps for this problem are pretty much the same. First, we write a reaction. So we remember that iron hydroxide is dissolving. And when it dissolves, we're going to get iron 3 plus. That's because there's three hydroxides, each at minus 1. So to balance this guy out, this guy must be plus 3. Plus 3 of my hydroxides. And those are both aqueous. All right, now let's make my ice table. I know this is Fe3 plus. I know this is OH minus. My initial is zero for both of them. My change is plus x. Now what should my change be for my hydroxide? Plus 3x. And that means at equilibrium, I have x and 3x. So I want to solve for my KSP. And my KSP is going to be iron plus concentration times my hydroxide concentration cubed. So KSP then is equal to x times 3x cubed. So let's keep going with that, and we get KSP is equal to uh, x. What's 3x cubed? Well, remember, I have to cube both things here. So I'm going to cube my x and my 3. 3 cubed is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. So I get x, 27x cubed. So KSP, then, is equal to 27x to the fourth. All right, we'll come up here, and we'll say KSP is equal to 27. And what's my value for X? Well, that's what that guy is. So when they give you the molar solubility, they're giving you X in your table. That should make sense, because remember, if my hydrox or if my iron is increasing by X, it's the same amount my iron hydroxide is decreasing by. That's how much can dissolve. So I plug that in for X, 1.96 times 10 to the minus 10 to the fourth power. And that's going to give me my KSP. And my KSP is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 38th, a very small value. So you can see that the KSP ends up teeny, largely because we have this fourth power here, because it makes three hydroxides. So that's how we can go to KSP from our molar solubility. All right, well, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry on molar solubility and KSP. If you have any questions, ask them below, or you can subscribe. Thanks for watching.